would be good if we, you know, if, if when we get it together that we get three of, you know, the same thing so that we can divide the three that we can buy them on the yeah. basket. Yeah. So yeah. if you buy a macaroni, then try to buy three boxes of three. Yeah. Or whatever you can get is absolutely fine. And yeah. you certainly will manage with whatever they got in the day. All right. We will. We will. And uh, the Lord would be honored. So uh, open your Bibles, if you would, please, to Ecclesiastes, chapter 12. Folks, listen, we do need to remember our families in the church when we are having our daily prayer. We have some uh, some families in the church that are really taking it on the chin and uh, and it, it's becoming of us that we help them out. So so pray uh, without without uh, going into too, too much detail. Just just pray for every church member if you can. Uh, get on. Get a directory uh, and pray for every church member if you can, and uh, that way, that way we will uh, we will carry, we we will uh, be able to get the victory. I guarantee. Verse thirteen. Let us hear the conclusion of this whole matter. Fear God, keep His commandments, for this is the whole duty of man. What is the duty of mankind? Pretty simple. We are to fear God and we are to keep his commandments. Today in the greatest nation on earth we have this situation. We have children killing children. We have adults killing unborn children. We have our homes flooded with images of violence. Some time ago we were shocked by the story of a seven-year-old boy who, bought, who carried a gun to school and shot his classmate. In another part of the United States, two misguided young men walked into a school, killed 13 students, and wounded many more. And if that wasn't enough, there are 4,000 babies aborted every day in this country. Our televisions and movie screens are depicted, are, 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 are filled with depictions of violence, of death, and of sex. There is no denying the truth. But I just have a question. What in this world is wrong? You know, if you look, uh, I, I, I've got a, who's that that just got an iPad? iPhone. iPhone. Jason. Jason, I got, I got an iPhone too, Jason. <laughs> yeah, I got an iPhone too. And, and I read it every day. And, and every day, either in Chesterfield, in Franco, or the city of Richmond, just about every day, someone gets killed. Someone gets killed. Folks, and And all through our elected officials, they said, why? Yesterday I came across a, a verse that was not new to me, but I did come across a verse that explains
What's wrong? What's wrong that everybody, that we see nothing wrong with killing our unborn children? What's wrong that we can't get along? Paul, writing to the church at Rome many, many, many years ago, probably <coughs> hit the nail right on the head. Paul, I think, probably knew what was wrong. And it's still wrong. Paul said this. There is no fear of God before men's eyes. That's what's wrong. What's wrong is no fear of God before men's eyes. The fear of God is our entrance into wisdom. It will prolong your life, fulfill your life, and enrich your life. I want to give you three things this morning having to do with the fear of the Lord. Having to do with the fear of the Lord. Number one, the fear of the Lord defined. What is the fear of the Lord? The Bible tells us that Solomon was the wisest man who ever lived. In 1 Kings 4, chapter 31, and I, you don't have to turn there this morning, but I will. 1 Kings 4, verse 31 the Bible says this, talking about uh, King Solomon. He was wiser than all men. So, you know, if he was wiser than all men, I believe it behooves us to listen to what he says. Paul says, that the greatest sum for mankind is to fear God. The greatest thing that mankind can do is to fear God. In truth, we have a great misunderstanding concerning this matter of fear. Webster writes concerning fear and he defines fear as an unpleasant often strong emotion caused by anticipation or awareness of danger now we're not talking about this kind of fear because that's the kind of fear that you may have by going outside in the dark and being afraid that the boogeyman is out there and will get you. I remember when I was a little boy, uh, my mom and daddy bought, bought this house one time and, and uh, it didn't have a bathroom in it. And I asked Mama, I said, Mama, what am I going to do? I wasn't too worried about what Mama and Daddy was going to do. I was worried about what I was going to do when my turn rolled around. And she said, well, I, I'll help you. I said, all right, well, it won't long before I needed some help. And she said, uh, come on, I'll go outside with you. I said, Mama, we're going outside to the bathroom. She said, yeah, we got a we got a, a thing place out there called the Johnny House. <laughs> and I said, Man, not me. I ain't going out there where the boogeyman are. 
You see, that's what that's what Webster was talking about. If you're going out and interfering with where the boogeyman lives. <laughs> we have we, every one of us have felt this kind of fear before. <laughs> At one level or another, and it is just so unpleasant. But what level, what fear, what word Solomon is talking about is the word Yah, Y-A-R-E. And that is, means to stand in awe of, to reverence, to honor, to respect. It does not mean that we cringe and tremble at the message, at the mention of God, of the name of God, but it does mean that we honor him, that we respect him, and that we reverence him. And that's, that's the word that Paul is talking about. He's not talking about now shaking when you're walking outside in the dark. He's talking about when, when we come into God's house, we are reverence. We stand in awe. We are honored. And we respect him. When we are in the presence of the Lord, we will not try to treat God like a good buddy. It means that when we are aware of his presence, we will react with awe and reverence. Look what Joseph said. I mean, uh, Job says in Job chapter 42. Job chapter 42 and verses 1 to 6. Then Job answered the Lord and said, I know that thou canst do everything and that no thought can be beholden from thee. Who is he that hideth counsel without knowledge? Therefore have I uttered that I understood not things too wonderful for me which I knew not. Here I beseech thee and I speak. I will demand of thee and declare unto thee I have heard of thee by the hearing of the ear. But now mine eye hath seen thee. Therefore I abhor myself. Job knew he was defeated. There was no way he could argue the case with God. He humbled himself before the Lord. And folks, listen. That's what God expects you and I to do. Is to humble ourselves before the Lord. Isaiah Isaiah, uh, that this is this is just an amazing thing that happens with Isaiah in Isaiah chapter six. Listen to listen to Isaiah in Isaiah chapter six and verses one to five. In the year that King Uzziah died, I also saw the Lord sitting upon a throne, high and lifted up. And his train filled the temple. Above it stood the seraphims, each one had six wings. With twain he covered his face, and with twain he covered his feet, and with twain he did fly. And one cried unto another and said, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God of hosts. The whole earth is full of his glory. And the posts of the door moved at the voice of him that cried, and the house was filled with smoke. Then said I, Woe is me, for I am undone, because I am a man of unclean lips, and I dwell in the midst of a people of unclean lips. For mine eyes have seen the King and the Lord of hosts. He saw the Lord when he rightfully saw himself. The sight of a holy God brought great conviction to Isaiah's heart. 
He confessed that he was a sinner. Never underestimate that what God can do to one who repents of his sin. The bottom line is this. When we are talking, when we are walking in the fear of the Lord, we will find ourselves in awe of his greatness and of his power. We will think much of him and little of self. He will loom very large in our hearts and in our minds. Does this describe the way that you see God? Do you live in fear of the Lord? Is there a way that you can tell yes? Your actions prove whether or not you liberally fear the Lord. Number two, the fear of the Lord described. Now we've seen the fear of the Lord defined. Now we're going to see the fear of the Lord described. Solomon seems to tell us that the fear of the Lord is demonstrated in a life that keeps the commandments of God. Simply stated, you and I prove what we think of the Lord by the way that we live our lives. And let me say that again. I want to make sure that you don't miss it. Simply stated, you and I prove what we think of the Lord by the way that we live our lives. How do you live your lives? Proverbs 3, 7 says this, Be not wise in thine own eyes. Fear the Lord and depart from evil. Deuteronomy 6, 2, that thou mightest fear the Lord thy God to keep all of his statutes and his commandments which I command thee, thou and thy son, and thine son's son, all the days of thy life, and that thy days may be prolonged. But it starts out this way, that thou mightest Fear the Lord to keep all of his statutes and all of his commandments. Proverbs 14, 27, the fear of the Lord is a fountain of life. Proverbs 16, 6, by mercy and truth, iniquity is purged. And by the fear of the Lord, men depart from evil. Do you know what? Do you know what? Uh, when when we will fear the Lord, we will depart from evil. When we will fear the Lord, we will depart from evil. The Bible and the Lord Jesus Christ equates fearing the Lord with doing what he said. They are, they are, they are two back to back. Fear the Lord and obey his commandments. Proverbs 1 7. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge. If I want to have knowledge, if I want to have wisdom, you know where it all has to start? Yep. With fearing the Lord. With reverencing the Lord. With honoring the Lord. The fear of the Lord is the most basic idea related to wisdom 
and is the key to understanding that. We begin to be wise when we develop a reverential trust in God. Now let me say that again. We begin to be wise when we develop a reverential trust in God. Again, I must ask, does this describe how you live your life? Now think about it. Think about your life. Do you fear God as an everyday happening? Does your life say, I love the Lord? Does your life, does your life say that? The fear of the Lord demands it. The fear of the Lord described. The fear of the Lord defined. The fear of the Lord demanded. You see, he says, that's a whole duty of mankind. What is my duty on earth? My duty on earth. Your duty on earth. Is this it is to fear the Lord now the way that I lead my life does it look like that you fear the Lord the way that you live your life as wise King Solomon concludes his remarks in this passage, he tells us that fearing the Lord and keeping his commandments, fearing God, keeping his commandments, guess what? That's the duty of mankind. Every one of us, that is our duty. You know, it's not hard to explain, is it? What, do, what, is, what is my job on earth? Solomon, the most wisest guy that ever lived, other than Christ, says this. My duty is to fear God and keep his commandments. Well, if I'm keeping his commandments... That shows how much I love him. Or oh, it shows the lack of how much I love him. You see, if I can love God with all my heart, then I have no trouble walking in His will. And neither will I have trouble loving my neighbor. If I love God with all of my heart, I will love my neighbor. In fact, if I can love God with all my heart, which is in essence to fear Him, then I will be able to keep His commandments and honor Him. But it all starts with the fear of the Lord. When I honor God, For me, the fear of the Lord is that 
God's going to take his hand off of me. You know, I'm not concerned that, that if I mess up, God's going to take something and hit me over the head with it. You know, that doesn't, that, that's, uh, that doesn't concern me. Let me tell you what concerns me. That God is going to pull his power back from me. You remember, you remember in uh, in Joshua chapter 6 and in, in Achan, you remember the story of Achan? And how Achan caused the whole camp to sin. And as a result, God pulled his power back. It's in Joshua chapter 6. You see, God, God pulled his power back. Without God's power, folks, you and I are nothing. Amen. Right. We, we, we just, we just, we just nothing. And that's why it's so important that we fear the Lord. That we have a reverential awe concerning God. That we honor the Lord. All of my strength comes from the Lord. You see, the fear of the Lord will motivate me and it will both motivate you to live a clean life. Let me say that again. I want to make sure that you don't miss it. The fear of the Lord will motivate you to lead a clean, a clean life. It is not the fear of chastisement. It is the fear of being put on the shelf. Amen. That ought, for the Christian, that ought to that ought to be one of the things that drives us is our fear that we're going to, that God's going to put us on the shelf. He wants us to live a life that He can use and that He can bless. He wants you to walk in awe of Him. He wants our hearts to be so filled with respect for the Lord that we, we would die rather than dishonoring him in his name. That is the very essence of fearing the Lord. Yes, there are blessings to those who walk in the fear of the Lord. And curses pronounced upon those who do not. Which way are you walking? Do you walk with the fear of the Lord? What motivates you to live the life that you live? Is it your respect, your reverential awe, your honor of God? Do you need to make some changes in your life this morning, folks? Think about your life. Think about what. Well, think about what drives you. Uh, is it is it uh, that you are afraid of that you are afraid of God, or is it that I have a reverential awe of God? I honor God. What drives us here this morning?
you see the fear of the Lord is the beginning of everything else. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. Beginning of knowledge. The fear of the Lord drives us to be what God would have us to be. Let's close in prayer. Lord, thank you for the time that you have given us this morning.